Hey, Tim Ockert here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a GUI version of Vim. Now, typically, Vim is only available via the command line, but there are a couple options. There are GVim and NeoVim Qt. Okay, let me show you how to set those up, and I'm going to show you on a Chromebook here. So if you're on a Chromebook, you want to open up your settings, and you want to go to Advanced, okay? And then under the Advanced tab, you'll see this Developers tab. Now, you have to have your Linux environment turned on to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my Linux environment. I have a welcome screen here, and I just click Next. You'll see it recommends a certain amount of space. Sometimes it recommends 7.5, but it knows that I'm a developer, so it's rec recommending 10 gigabytes of space. I'm going to click Install. Okay, And this is going to go ahead and install. And while it's doing that, uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but what I am going to do is, I hope it's opening up Crosh. What I am going to do is pause this video. And I'll come back in a moment. Hey, I'm back. And Linux is installed. And you'll see we get this terminal here. And your terminal is probably going to look a little different. I have mine modified here in settings. You're probably going to get the dark version. And uh, yeah, you probably get um, I don't know, this font. OK, so this is what you're going to see pop up when you install Linux. OK, so. Right off the bat, one thing you can try in the terminal is you can type Vim, and boom, you've got 8.1, version 8.1.1401, which isn't the most recent version, but it's it's pretty close. Um, it'll work just fine right out of the box. So if you're happy with that, you know you can go to insert mode and just start typing your code away, okay? But if you want a GUI version, of Vim. I'm just going to quit without saving, which is uh, colon QW. So I'm going to quit out of here. If you want a GUI version of Vim, uh, there's a way to install it. Now, typically when I first turn on the Linux environment, I make sure that I'm updated and upgraded to the, the most current stuff. And to do that, I'm just going to type sudo apt apt update and two ampersands there, sudo apt upgrade. And I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask me a few things. Um, so it's asking me uh, if I, you know, the suite is going to change from stable to old stable. Uh, you can choose whether to upgrade or not. Uh, I'm just going to say yes, yes. And uh, then it's going to go ahead and going to uh, run through a few things. And then it's going to say it's going to add 16.4 or whatever the number is, uh, but in this case, it's kilobytes. That's basically nothing. So I'm going to say yes. Get the most up-to-date uh, thing there. And so it's going to go ahead and update. And you usually want to make sure you're updated before you uh, install software. Um, but if you go ahead and you just set up your environment all in one evening, you know, just do the update once. Sometimes you might need to update twice. But anyway, so it's going to run through and update. Okay. And it's going. It'll take a minute, maybe, to update the stuff, depending on how fast your internet connection is. Mine is pretty slow right now. Um, it gets that way in the evenings where I stay. It gets, slows down. Okay, so now it's updated, upgraded. We're good to go. And what you're going to want to do now, and let me increase the font so you can see this. Uh, go to settings here, and we'll go down and increase the font to, let's, let's just make it really large. Okay, so what you're going to do now is type sudo apt install vim dash gtk3 okay and 
hit enter. And it's going to say, well, after this operation, it's going to install 43.7 megabytes of additional disk space to put that in perspective. When you install Atom, it's about, there's about 400 uh, megabytes and then maybe a, a few dependencies. So it's really like 600 megabytes um, VS code. If you didn't have the dependencies, you know, you're, you're talking close to a gig, but um, VS code itself is a few hundred megabytes. Those are fairly small, really, um, compared to some of the other IDEs that you can install. So this 43.7 megabytes, that's pretty small. Okay, so I'm going to hit yes, and it's going to go ahead and install. Okay, and you'll see it's unpacking a little bit of Ruby in there. So I might do some future videos on Ruby. Um, it'll have some other libraries it's calling on uh, as it goes through and installs again. My internet is slow, that's why it's taking a long time. And we go through and we're almost done. And this will probably run faster for you. Um, okay, so it's now installed. So if we go to our apps. We'll see, uh, so for he, for me, it pops up right here. So you see GVM. Now, if I open this up, you can also go to your Linux apps and it'll usually be in there, or it would be, sometimes it might be in one of these apps if it, sometimes it does that. But uh, I'm gonna click on GVM to open it up. And then I can right click here and just pin it. And you see, I've got the same version that comes with the Debian 10 as of this date in, uh, September 21, 2021, you get uh, 8.1.1401, uh, which isn't the most recent version of Vim, but it's pretty close. Um, and it works very well. Okay. Now, out of the box, um, you've got a toolbar here. You've got like this tooltip bar, and you've got a scroll bar here. In your uh, GVMRC, so you want to create a .GVMRC. In that, um, you can get rid of this stuff and just have a little, little bar on top and have the nice gooiness. Um, cool thing about this is, you know, the colors are pretty nice on it. So if I do, if I change to the Peach Puff uh, theme, that's pretty nice. Uh, if I go to say Desert, that's also pretty nice. I like Desert, um, it's pretty easy on the eyes. Um, you know, you can do a lighter color like Dalek. Um, you can actually just tab through a lot of these. Blue is kind of cool. Uh, you can do industry. That's a little darker. Um, you know, and you can, of course, install custom themes. Let's do a shine. That's that's nice and bright, a little too bright for the evening. Um, slate, a little darker one. Slate's kind of nice. Um, but anyway, so you can go through and experiment with it. Uh, you have these nice toolbar here where you can paste stuff in, you can cut stuff, so you can cut and paste. If you don't really want to mess with your VimRC and you don't want to just mess with the app, you can have a GUI Vim without doing anything with your GVimRC. You don't even have to create one. You can go with the defaults and you can start writing code right away in a GUI app using Vim. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, please uh, like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications if you haven't done so already. If you have done that, thank you. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.